-hmm. we are set. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming, Sasha. Uh, so we have a central camera that is going to be over that bulb that is flying over there. And we have some cameras okay. that are pointing right out of uh, to us. Yeah. So it's okay. really nice to have you here in, in this show. Uh, I met you a couple years ago in a hackathon. And you were there alone doing your thing with your Bose headphones. I used to work at Bose and I reached out to you like, Hey, you like your headphones? <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> you actually, me, I, I, actually yeah. I, I was as a team. Yeah, we have a whole people of team to create it, that, that, that like audio-based game that time. Oh, really? Right, but in, in that yeah, hackathon, yeah, you yeah. were alone, right? No, 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 no. It's a different hackathon. I was a game jam hackathon, like in Facebook. I was by myself doing the hackathon. Yes, but that's where I met you. I, I was in the team, actually. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So... I met you there, and from there I follow your social networks. That I see you always working on different projects. Um, you, you, if you can, if you want, you can put your controls on the table, and that's going to enable the hand tracking automatically. Mm, oh my goodness, I, I'm not defending the hand tracking, to be honest. Hold on. Oh, okay. Why you don't like the see. movements of? The oh, hands? because it's the hands it's to actually the hands it's to get into the tire much faster. You know when it. When you, do, when you do actually hand tracking, it's less mm -hmm. accurate to pointing on a menu system. You cannot navigate it. Your hand is getting tired. Uh, so right. You yeah, here you're benefit. not gonna be pointing to any menu. Just grabbing some stuff I put on the table. You can grab that. Right. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's a, well, a drone almost. there. <laughs> yeah, we're working on having a better object. <laughs> That's right. like a B drone. So I, I've seen you creating a lot of different projects all the time on your social media accounts and your Twitter or your Instagram. What are you working on right now? Uh, so, so right, at the moment, just I'm trying to focus in most like uh, exploring ER technology in the market, specifically like, for example, uh, like Lens Studio is a great tool to creating ER experience and also uh, recently was launching Lightship. And Yantic, I try to explore more about that specific, and also I'm very excited about trying on like uh, eight ball. It was more accessible mm -hmm. right now because it used to be very expensive, pricey for the sort of developer, and at the moment they uh, decreased the membership like a subscription price. So it's like I think right now it's like nine or ten dollars at the moment. So I think it's perfect for trying on to test it. Uh, that's kind of tool. So because I see like a future for the ER technology for the next couple of years, specifically for devices as a glasses on the market. If you can see like uh, one of those, like because uh, I already I already created one of the experience for the ER for the Snapchat spectacle mm -hmm. glasses game. It was very excited to work on that project. And also uh, recently I was there in the AWS conference and I ch check out the many other like. Uh, ER enabled glasses on the market capable to do cool, cool stuff. So it's kind of very excited. Uh, in a couple of years, I think it's going to be the, the, the taking of this kind of like a more, we're going to use it more in our the, the daily base specifically. Especially like it would be cool to see like a, a live uh, language, like a, uh, mm -hmm. communication, a, a, a translation. That's going to be cool actually. Yeah. So Sasha, so, so this program is kind of meant for everyone to understand it. So if you could explain to someone what augmented reality is, like for a kid or for a grandma, how could you explain it to them? Right. So augmented reality, actually, it's implementing like digital items in our life, like in our surrounding. It could be like anything or experience. So anything that you kind of like, uh, uh, how do you say immersive uh, so basically like any like digital items what you can see in the game so maybe in the movie you actually can see implemented in your real life surrounding that's mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. simple way i can explain it this way how they work right so we can we can put a, another layer on top of reality right right we so we can exactly, have like a but, 3d hat that layer that layer, a layer also can integrate like a, a communicate with our surrounding for example and also can also we can recreate yeah. the physics how that actually mm -hmm. digital object what it actually in our surrounding can like uh, to bouncing or maybe just to adapt it like even the lighting reflection materials you can see it so 
it's kind of cool, like excited things to do this because in the beginning AR was very we can also just insert like simple like object with no like any material reflections or physical like a uh, f- or any physics. But it's like here mm-hmm. right at the moment, what technology actually allows us to do, you can implement like using like any like digital assets in our life, but also they can actually more feel more immersive because of physics. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, um, when I did one of my first augmented reality projects, it was a personal mm-hmm. project when I was in college. So uh, what I did was on a credit card, I wanted to, when you do some image recognition on the credit card, you get the mascot of the bank. So the the, man, yeah. the mascot of the bank was very simple, just some cubes and some, like, some balls. It was uh, the, the mascot of this bank is named Baneskin. It's in my country, in mm-hmm. Venezuela. So I made this little side project on my own, and I went to call it uh, to my to my university, and I showed it to some friends, and and no one understood what was going on. You know, it was very very near, like five years, six years ago, and everyone was like, "What the hell is going on here?" So they were like, "All right, you invented the augmented reality on the credit card for the bank, and it wasn't even for actually the bank. It was just my personal project." But then the right. word started to like move around and people thought that I invented the mascot for the bank. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, you know, it was just people sharing inaccurate things uh, around. I-, I was wondering if they, until a certain point, they thought I invented the bank. <laughs> so it's funny because people can not most of the time understand these technologies, right, until they actually say it. Like in Pokemon Go, which is one of the best examples of right, right. AR Pokemon right now. Was like a, yeah, Pokemon Go, like, what was it, like, the most, like, I think it's 2017, there was very wild, people, like, it was some really hype. Everybody used it, like, any generation of people, just as a family, they go in the park, try to find the Pokemons, because it was kind of cool. But it's, it's still in the market right now, but it's, like, less I can see a useful case, because maybe it goes hype, it goes down, probably. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing with Pokemon Go was that it was mostly a GPS experience. You know, more, you could you could do the same application without any AR, and it's going to be the same thing. So it was not actually about AR. I mean, you are projecting some 3D models on a surface with some animations, but it was mostly mm-hmm. about the, the GPS and, of course, of course, the whole brand of Pokemon, right? You right, right, all right. All the Pokemon in these the, different yeah, areas. And then, yeah. And the cool part was actually really like uh, the, uh, it's make people more be more active, walk around, explore the area of actually living because yeah, sometimes people nice. live in like years and they have no idea they have amazing place like next to their house because they never see it. And now the because of the game and give the ability to explore the area, so this is kind of cool. Yeah, I think there were some Pokemon's that were just in a specific areas, even in the world or in some specific cities. Yeah, it's it's been a very big hit everywhere, right? Uh, Maybe, yeah, but... actually, I, I, I remember everyone playing, like, all of my friends try around these Pokemon games, like, uh, even they're yeah. not into technology, but it was so kind of interesting, like, to try something new, you know, just mm-hmm. like, and specifically, it's playing with a feeling, because most of us just grew up in Pokemon uh, anime, and it's yeah. just like, okay... So just like okay, that's kind of interesting to try not to to be to be actually to catch a Pokemon in real life. Yeah, that's true. Well, another good example of AR for people who still don't get it is the Instagram filters. For example, you have worked a lot in in filters, right? Uh, for yes, creating, yeah, yeah. you get the camera, and in your face, you get like a lizard, or you get some makeup. There is a lot of type of filters. Right, so actually for the body features, like I remember a couple of years ago, the most like popular thing it was filter change your like adjustment for your face, like you can do cool stuff. Mm-hmm. But later on, like uh, you actually can do like cool actually experience, not like a face, a play even the game, like uh, actually just using your face like feature, open your eye, raise your eyebrows, open your eyes wider, like open your mouth, so you can actually playing just interaction. Specific is kind of cool, like for the brand, like uh, they can go like interaction with mini games or maybe challenge mm-hmm. so the user can explore about it, learn about it more. Anytime the the, the shopping, so the uh, product is kind of cool at the moment, yeah. That's part. Do you think that it could be a problem? Well, I think it's already even a problem with that many filters for a lot of people. Like everyone, their every photo is 
filter it right now. Everyone has like 10 filters to go. Everyone is always putting filters and being like, uh, what's the name? A fish, catfish, <laughs> when they are going to yeah, meet yeah, someone yeah. Some, in real life. Yeah, some people overusing, overusing, even for the video. It's not about a photo. It's even like a live video, like if you're using uh, filters to do this. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. But it's what I see like uh, right now, the, the last like two years, people st- stop using this type of filters to actually change shape of your face a, a lot. So... Most yeah. of users try to do using less and less because actually it's it's not great for your mental health also. That's true. Yeah, I have noticed in the couple in in the recent years people are using actually less, right? Just just right. like slight makeup, right? Or like everyday makeup. So it, it feels like an actual makeup is not super weird AR filter that is not realistic right 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 so like a light light makeup like but it's like the problem is some of the filters they actually change shape of your face like a mm-hmm. lot so the, i don't think it's very helpful very healthy to do this for the mental health to be honest so just yeah. like people could stop like uh, accept themselves as they, they are there's a big problem about that yeah that's, that's true um another use of, of ar that i've seen even you i think you've been working on something like this is with clothing, right? That you can have, a, I mean, let's say that we are all having an all-day wearable, some kind of glasses, and I can see the AR in your in your clothing, the, the style you have. And maybe it's some sweater that is dynamic and you have some animations mm-hmm. in your sweater. Um, I think that's pretty cool. You're working on something like that right yeah. now? Yeah. Uh, so, no, I, I was actually the testing time of the visual, like uh, segmentation, the body hands. It was kind of cool. Uh, specifically like Lens Studio, they actually have pretty good like tab. So you actually you can like put some cool gift on your shirt, and actually you can like uh, segment your hands so you can overlapping cool stuff. So I think it's kind of cool feature. Actually, what it would be cool like I think it's great for the digital fashion in general, like uh, creating mm-hmm. your items. And never just put a, like a ER glasses and to see like cool like a, a immersive like the clothing or maybe animated clothing, not like we have a not not m- static. So yeah, that's part. Yeah, and 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 I think it's gonna be at least way cheaper for people to acquire these animations, right? We don't need to be spending a lot of time, a lot of money on importing a lot of clothes from. Mm-hmm. Asia, for example, which is also very uh, a very dark industry, right? So right? one of the great apps right now in the market, uh, you can test it for the digital clothes. It's called Dress X. They have mm-hmm. an amazing app. You can try different like outfit. If you really like it, you you, you can buy it from them on like, specific limits, like a collection that dress hats or anything else in the market. Yeah. You know, th- there is a lot of people that think, hey, I'm never going to buy virtual goods or virtual clothing. Mm, I, w- I, I disagree. They already have done it before <laughs> in the games. When you update your like, yeah. uh, character in the game, also you updated yeah. some like uh, skins, outfit, like all new items. We already have done it before, but it's like a just, it's just different media right now. We just buy for, mm-hmm. for them for ourselves. Is it like a, the, the character in the game? So people already used to do these things, like buying the digital like clothes or skin. Yeah, I think that people are maybe not not thinking about it in, in the way of you are buying something because you want to wear it and you want people to see that that's your style, right? And if you spend a lot of time, for example, here in let's say in the metaverse you are using this clothing that you bought for a couple dollars and that represents you, right? And and that's fine. You're spending some hours here meeting some nice people and they're telling you, hey, yeah, I like your clothing. And the same thing happens in real life. You're buying a, a pair of pants for $40 and that because you like those pants, right? And right, you go right. out with those pants. Mm-hmm. That's that's right, yeah. And I actually, um, but the, one of the like cases, what I actually was reading, it was like a couple of years ago. They were testing in the store, like physical store. They have a like giant mirror, 
and actually mirror was integrated with EAC, EAC Close. So before you go and turn on like physical items, you enable to try like a uh, digital items on yourself. It look like a uh, you can actually mm-hmm. make it, like outfit, combine different items, and then you actually when you find a like perfect like outfit for yourself, you actually can t- you actually going on and try on like physical items. So actually it should be like helpful for this spending less time in the store. It actually would be great. Yeah, actually, one of the upcoming guests that I'm going to have in the show is a person that is work. He's, she's been working for the past like two months on creating like a first fashion show within Horizon. And mm-hmm. she's been working on a lot of like stages and a lot of like things that you can put in your in your avatar, like hats or maybe Mm-hmm. Some jackets or some pants and i think i think it's nice how everything is expanding right and there is a lot of brands that actually want to have, have a play in this show exactly in, in my dress i think i think yesterday i just read about the nike in uh uh what it's uh i maybe uh, i don't pronounce maybe right like the the name are uh, rt uh rtfk uh RTK? the metaverse like yeah yeah yeah. they just launched it like a nike nike in art okay oh my god I forget the name correctly. There's like abbreviation or certificate. So they actually just launched like a jacket, like a Fujitsu jacket together, like as, as a mm-hmm. collaboration for them. So it's not the first time they've done like this type of collaboration, but it's kind of there. The big brands slowly start creating digital assets specifically only like online. So yeah, you, you cannot find it like it's a physical, but it's online. It's also you can available limited edition. Right. Um... And a lot of people is jumping right now. There was a concert of Post Malone. Have you have you seen that in in oh, no, Western no, Horizon? I, I, I missed I, I missed that. I think it was last week something, right? Uh, no, it was it was yesterday. It was yesterday. No, oh, it was yesterday. Um, oh, oh, yeah. yeah so <laughs> you have that paper sticked in your your avatar. It? Yeah, it's a <laughs> very buggy paper. You can move it away. You can try. <laughs> All right. So like the, the thing so is, I can draw something. Yeah, nice. I'm trying to include more stuff, so it's more dynamic. You can you can actually grab this this tool right here. Kind of far. No, it's far away from me, so it's not like a. Ah. Well, I can it's not grab. Ah, come here, come so, here. Too. So this environment was creating in the uh, horizon or where? No, this, this is okay. yeah. This is a specific. This is an, a specific application I built. I grabbed some packages and I just curated everything to look how I want it. And mm-hmm. the thing is, I want this to be a show to talk about hope in technology because there is a lot of people that is scared about technology. Like, hey, we're gonna be like people in Wally, right? <laughs> That's this. Everyone is scared of that. But I think that we are actually aiming for having a, uh, some technology that actually helps us in our day-to-day life. And you as a developer, same as me, we are not thinking on, let's make everyone just be be fat and be uh, sluggish. We want people to be active to this stuff and just to have fun, right? Uh, not not just to be lazy. Um, and that's, that's one of the points that I want to, to make here, that actually technology can be used for good. And that's why you can right. see like a combination in the environment of technology plus like trees mm, or some I grass see, yeah. and some, some colors, some flowers, some nature. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, this this kind of cool idea, but it's like I'm just curious. Like, this pretty assets was creating in the Facebook in the Horizon Worlds, or it's in like a other like three D software. It's a it's a it's a three D software, and I built my own Unity app, but I'm using the mm. Meta avatars, so it's not Horizon. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of remind me of like a uh, Horizon World, like uh, in general, like vibes, like. <laughs> it's like... Yes, I mean it's the same avatars that you use in Horizon, mm-hmm. and what they are looking is to people to integrate their avatars in their mm-hmm. in their own apps. You can actually use the Top Golf app, and it's gonna be with these avatars uh, for Top Golf yeah. if you want to play golf, uh, but it's not Horizon. Um, but in Horizon, of course, you have these avatars. You have a lot of more features. Um, to use in these avatars, like the presence boundary, if you don't want people to get too close to you, or 
there's like uh, some chat bubbles so you can add people mm-hmm. there's some interactions to be in a party with people if you do like a gesture mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. or you can friend them uh, there's a lot to do in, in horizon but this is an, a specific application i made so i can have guests like you and have this yeah, camera okay, set up like a, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, like that, a tv show Yeah, that's actually a really cool, like, idea, like, type, like, there is, like, I think it's something similar to it in VR chat, like, also, like, uh, recording and also chatting with someone else, like, uh, in the world different. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, w- what I like it to do it with, with the meta avatars is that it feels, I don't know, kind of, like, a bit more serious, because in VR chat you can be a dragon and you can be a minion right yeah <laughs> you can I, I be can homer like simpson can be the, the bottle can be just apple and just in general yeah. <laughs> you can be the whole house you can be the environment <laughs> yeah and just like this cool. i mean what i really like uh, uh for the facebook avatars like their face expression is kind of cool it's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. more natural like uh, when you when you communicate with someone else like uh like with you like for example like the view of your eyes like you blinking and it actually feels more natural to communicate than just rather mm-hmm. like some simple avatar just to see the hand gesture how action to oh my god i think press something and that's that's why i'm not a fan of the of the hand tracking yeah all right don't worry is it fine that's or no Uh, not yet. It would be cool, like if you can press it instead of flying from my hand. Like, have you tried actually? Uh, I just I got like recently a Snapchat like a mini drone when actually you can record it yourself. Uh-huh. So it's kind of cool. Like you have to put it in your hand, like this open palm. Put it like in your hand, and actually it's in the camera and start sort of, like uh, to take it from your hand, like uh, flying. Like it, it's kind of just rotating around you, recording the video. Like, 30 seconds, I think it's maximum minutes can record the video of you or maybe you can like a walk in it's going to be following you also behind you so it's very tiny, it's kind of cool the downside like when it's going to be windy outside of course you cannot record any video because it's going to be far away and mm-hmm. there is no like, any uh, sound recording so I think it's kind of cool like part but technology so you can make one of them just walking around it's going to be recording you when you follow following you and recording Um, yeah, really uh, you've done a lot of things for for Snapchat. Is is this just your personal interest, or do you actually work well, for them? One of them was spe- spectacles was collaboration work to make a game to explore the use cases for the AR glasses. This part, uh, kind of part. So what I really like was spectacles. This standalone glasses. You don't have to connect it mm-hmm. like any phones, like other or like AR glasses. So this part for the part, but what I see so far, like it's very like excited, like lens studio, physics interaction, play more integration, and also they have uh, you actually can build app based on the technology. It's cool, but you have to request request to just receive this SDK camera kit to make it come. So Got it's it. actually kind of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, this part. It's amazing. So this, like, I think it's VR, like, a slowly integrated in our life, like, in general. So we're gonna, we're gonna see. Yeah, they like, are always exploring, users. right? They are always exploring technology, even though it was, let's say, just an app. Uh, they are doing a lot of hardware now. From yeah, the past, yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. The, I mean, the, in general, the company also they're great in camera, right? So also, but it's like uh, yeah. so far in the market, I think it's Lens Studio is one of the best like a software for you. You can create a, any quickly your experience, very quick learning process. That's kind of soft tools. Uh, the game in the game, this engine. So yeah, in general. Yeah, uh, those people use Snapchat in Moldova. I don't know. I'm just I don't live there anymore, so I don't know what people. <laughs> Or I mean, when time. you when you were living there. No, the daytime there is no like people don't use it. I don't. There is no some chat that time. Right. In general. Yeah. yeah. In my country, they don't use Snapchat at all. And when I came here, everyone had their Snapchat, and they were like add me, but I was like. I don't want to add you because you're going to be my only friend in Snapchat. And that's going right. to be weird. I'm just going to be getting in to talk to you. I uh, so hear everyone Snapchat using it. Like yeah, it's a different a different generation folks using. Like, so Snapchat, like mm-hmm. most u- users, like they, it's most like Gen Z actually use most of the time Snapchat. They even don't have a 
Instagram app. They most time using Snapchat. So when you open the actual Snapchat right now, it's not about like taking photos and snapping photos and sharing, but also there's a bunch of like uh, mini like uh, shows like there, like you can watching there, creating. You can actually be as a create create the content, make a video, and post it there. Actually, gain the followers there also. So it's like a pretty wild tool. I think one of the mm-hmm. cool features that I really like it's kind of interaction map. You can see mm-hmm, the map mm-hmm. where is your friends, and also the map showing exactly what's going on in that area right now and how busy that area. Maybe some cool stuff going on, so you can go go there and check it out. So I think it's kind of cool feature to have this, like uh, in the map for the AR. Yeah. And also, like speaking about this map, they also available some of the geolocation. They all will only like uh, lens. Uh, there in that geolocation. I think one of this is LACMA Museum. They have their own like, cool uh, lens experience on that geolocation specifically to explore it. So one yeah, of the and, feature. And actually, yeah. I, I think it's nice that it's more uh, anonymous than giving your number away. You know, it's just your yes, Snapchat yeah. ID and that's great. But it, I, I downloaded it recently again and it kind of feels like WeChat. You know, there is a lot. There is like news. I, I, there is I, I, AI. I have never use WeChat. I I never have a WeChat. Like uh, so, I think it's WeChat is like a Chinese app, right? Yeah, it's a Chinese app. Yeah, but they use mm. it for a lot of stuff. Do they have like an ER feature? Some of the VR chat or no? Uh, I, I mean, I, I've just seen videos of it. It's a lot of friends of mine here in, in Seattle. Mm. They are using it, uh, but I know it's super super complex, and I mean they have a lot of features. Because it's like the yeah. app. I think it's even built in with Android phones in, in China. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, have you seen like there is a recent like launching new phone and it's called the brand called Nothing. It's kind mm-hmm. of a new feature. It just was launched a couple of days ago in Europe. So I think it's kind of interesting design. It was kind of like remind me iPhone, but more upgraded version. Mm-hmm. These people, I don't know. I will send you a link later so you can check it out. This kind of interesting. Who, who did this? Is Snapchat? The com- No, the company called Nothing. It's the name Nothing. nothing. That, exactly, that's the brand. Yeah, when, when, if you have Instagram, when you type in Nothing, list their account like uh, <laughs> name is Nothing. Yeah, and then the yeah, model of the phone called name. Phone One. Super simple. Like this yeah, yeah. file, like a lot of this. So they actually have a pretty good the the, the, the promotion, the uh, the launch product. It was kind of cool. So maybe it's creating a lot of hype around this devices. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I remember when I was in at AWS, I was able to trying haptic gloves uh, company. Mm-hmm. It was kind of cool feeling in VR, cool feeling mm-hmm. like the water dropping in your hand. Like yeah. drop by drop, you, you can feel it. It was amazing, cool stuff. And also when you grab the rope and also yeah. pulling, you feel it how the rope is slipping in your hand inside specifically. It was kind of cool. How but real was that? It, it was, was it realistic? AWS. Yes, it was really realistic. It's a VR gloves, like you put it in the glove specific. And they actually created all the feelings in your palm hands doing this and you can grab the trees like anything the water you can feel in the wind the steam you can feel in your hands but it's not available for the consumers because the backpack it's pretty heavy i think it's 20 pounds mm-hmm. something the backpack mm-hmm. like you have to just carry around uh mm-hmm. but i feel like it's pretty potential in the future we can use like a vr gloves uh in vr to more like feeling like you wouldn't grab the paper feel the Thinning of the paper, like a pressure or something, or even just like this device I'm taking out, feeling like like how it's sharp by the end, for example. I yeah. think it's kind of a cool feature, yeah. That's, the part. That's Have crazy. You been in, in, any recent conference for the ER VR? Mm, I have not. Uh, let me remember. Well, with, with the, the whole COVID situation, you know, um, most of the conferences went went out, and even hackathons. I'm I'm very into hackathons. I, I met you in a hackathon, but I, I always try to go. So I I think the last one I did was in Dallas. Uh, I actually flew all the way from oh, wow. from Boston, where I was living, to Dallas just to that hackathon, and it was fun. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I did I was... the same in California when I met you. I just flew from there from Facebook headquarters to meet you there. That one, yeah. <laughs> 
that one was before COVID. Like it was the last yeah, one that was before for COVID. me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the before COVID. But it's, I'm talking about this year. So I was in AWS. It was like in the beginning June. How was it? First few days. It was great. There's, let's say, I was, uh, I was trying. Uh, I tried haptic gloves. It was cool part. There's a lot of other deep, different type of gloves. Uh, try on, and also it was a lot of like ER glasses be presented by different companies. So I think one of those like glasses was like a completely like a green, greenish mono color, like all the interface. And otherwise, like more implemented, uh, like helping you during the day, like a reminder stuff, uh, glasses that stuff. And also, I really like it. There is actually Sony presented 3D screen. So you can sit down mm-hmm. in front of the screen and it feels like free the object right in front of you, like floating. Mm-hmm. And you need any any like extra devices. You just screen and it's gonna be faking like an illusion, like the object floating close to you. How and does also, it work like, with lasers? Lasers? Uh, how does it's it work? Something like screen feature. I don't don't I don't know exactly how it's worked that screen feature, like but it's something like with a layer from the screen probably. But you can mm-hmm. see like object floating like uh like in front like of the screen and actually it actually changed the lighting also of this object personality skin and right. actually it's up on the market already there is other company also uh, have you seen have you seen the ring the ring yeah the movie uh, the ring it's a scary movie. Either. It's kind of old. Oh, it's a scary movie from, from the girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, I guess you yeah, can do something good, like that, right? Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea to have a scary movie with this previous screen. Uh, that's part. Yeah, and there also <laughs> was an AWS. You actually you able to try uh, Magic Leap Two headset. Oh, nice. Part. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did a bit tried... of experimentation with that with Magic Leap. No, they they they're already gonna selling uh, Magic Two headset. It's All right. selling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're the launching uh uh the headset. So I was trying the kind of cool f- uh, feature in the Magic Leap 2. It was like a dim feature when you can dimming uh everything to clear like a vision. Especially like it's kind of cool if you're using this headset outside. And also the increased view uh field of view and I in the v- vertically you can see more wider actually like in the view I think it's uh, also nice touch at that spot in the general design is, is way better than the first generation of the Magic Leap in general, yeah yeah I, I tried the the first generation of Magic Leap oh, the I, I like the like, whole yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of old already right like four or five years yeah it was uh, but of, I like yeah, the whole exactly. Yeah, I like the the presentation of the product, and for developers, it was super dope. Um, but I think it wasn't like for final customers, maybe because no one was using Magic Leap as a customer. Well, because was there was no content. Maybe. The first one, the uh, for the first one, there was no content, and why you need to spend three thousand dollars in the heights of there's nothing yeah, you can play expensive. it and they can use it. You know, if at that time, at the same time, you can spend a couple hundred dollars on VR headset. There's a bunch of like games, like any like apps you can play around, so it doesn't mm-hmm. make sense. That's the reason why Magic Leap they pivot actually. They actually right now focus on c- commercials instead of like on mm. the like kind of on the consumer side at the moment. Got it. So probably probably, probably similar to HoloLens. Have you tried HoloLens? Yeah. Yeah, I've tried yeah. HoloLens, exactly. So something similar to HoloLens, exactly. Then you can use it in the factory for the, on the, the job training. It would be great, like implemented like during like Training is going to be perfect for the AR feature headset, like Magic Leap 2. You see, we have HoloLens. Uh, I think also the last one had on so yeah. That's right. Yeah, and in HoloLens, uh, I've been using it also. And you go to the uh, store of HoloLens, and it's it's pretty empty. You can see how this headset is being used mostly for maybe enterprise, right? Like for companies right. that they yes. want to do some training. Yeah. And you are doing this whole weird movements in the air. I don't know if that's going to be the final mixed reality user experience. You know, be moving your arms like this all the time. It's yeah, kind of weird. It's, it's exactly. It's kind of weird. I think you need, like, at least two controllers so you can actually feel the object in your arm, you know, like how it integrates kind of, yeah. the same part. So we need something because that's why I'm not I'm not a big fan of hand tracking. It's less mm. accurate. You spend more time just to navigate it to targeting that button you have for clicking. If there's like a yeah. less like movement, I can click it already. That's what I needed. So 
Uh, but it's great to, I think maybe they're going to add an extra. It would be good. Maybe, I don't know, sure, I have not built anything for the Hellens too, but probably you can like build in the custom like devices or like a hand tracking mm-hmm. or something else so you can feel it specifically for some like a job training uh, yeah. case. Yeah. Definitely. It feels like a, it should feel like a remote control, like a tool, right? Not, not right. that you're just yeah. moving around because like 20 years ago, maybe having a hologram of a button right here, it was really cool and impressive to everyone. Like, yeah, I can press this button that is flying. But right now, it's like super mainstream. And at least for us as developers, we start thinking like maybe having a button flying in the corner all the time and that I need to reach to it, it's kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I guess that the next step is to, all right, let's use this technology on a better in a better way, maybe have a, like a keyboard, something more closer that actually feels like a tool if you want to have a better user experience, right? A, a good interface. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is going to be great for this part. So we'll just see it. Yeah. Have you built anything for Halansu? So that's the current uh, tech that I'm using. It might work right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing a lot of things in there, but I cannot talk about it, <laughs> you know? Um, it's 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 not personal work. It's just like work work. Right. So, but, so you know, in general, like of... for in general, if you compare like developing for the uh, Quest two and Holland two, mm-hmm. which which one like are you more enjoying process like for developing? I definitely enjoy more uh, Quest two. Yeah. Quest the, the the whole yeah even not only the interfaces you can make and the user experience you can have, it's also the the development process. It's super clunky for HoloLens. You need to install mm-hmm. a lot of stuff, and it's it's kind of a problem. Uh, developing for Quest 2 is, first of all, it's easier. Second of all, it's right. cheaper because the HoloLens is like $4,000. Uh, a Quest 2 yeah. is just like 300 And also, you have way more users in Quest 2, right? And the user base of Quest 2 is growing all the mm-hmm. time. People are super excited. People are creating stuff within, for example, Horizon. Uh, I've been meeting a lot of hor- people in Horizon that are creators, and they are creating these really awesome structures and places and mini games or experiences. And they feel like, yes, uh, this is what we're going to be dedicating part of our lives to create these scenarios and places for people. So it feels like a ground where people is super excited to build the stuff mm-hmm. yeah this i can really have you tried to build like any like a vr experience in unreal engine here in in have quest 2 no 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 just in or general in horizon. like because and not the horizon in general like because at the moment i'm learning like uh Unreal Engine 5 because uh-huh. I was really impressed like render system like in general like I said it's kind of cool feature so I'm going to ask you do you have any experience with anything in Unreal Engine? Oh I haven't used Unreal Engine I, oh, I think I downloaded it once no I think I downloaded it <laughs> once and I was like not today <laughs> I just closed it but right. I mean you know it's a learning curve for everyone in any any program that's, uh, that's true, I think yeah. I think once you know how to code of course, it's gonna get easier for you. They they but, have they have actually a blueprint yeah. system, so you don't like know the C plus plus. So you can use a blueprint system, mm. but I think so far, I think I think they like I like the templates already in Unreal Five. Oh nice. Job. So let's try to explore more about this side Unreal Five because I'm really love it how the render material they use it. It's, it looks very good. Like yeah, general. right. It's super. Yeah. It it seems really nice. Yeah, and and also on top of that, meta humans and pricing. I think they mm-hmm. in uh, the last the Matrix movie, Matrix Four, they are actually using mm-hmm. meta humans there, it's like thirty thirty five thousand like meta humans in the scenes. I'm one of the yeah. Wow, nice. And they have this new technology in Unreal Engine. What is the name? It's for like photorealistic environments. I forget what the name is, but yeah, it's really photorealistic. Like, it feels like uh, I remember it, it, one of the. It's some are... cloud rendering or something. Like, yeah, they go, it's like, to so, the so, pixel. so it's good. So you, so it's kind of cool feature because you don't have to rely on your like a PC or laptop like 
feature. So you you actually can create a MetaHuman and it's going to be ready in the cloud. So you can receive the final result already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think not a lot of people have had the opportunity to actually use any cloud technology, but it's it's incredible. Uh, I've been using, for example, NVIDIA GeForce now. I don't know, have you used it? It's it's for cloud games. Mm -hmm. And so you just subscribe. It's like $5 a month. And you have a full library of games that you don't need a, a super PC to to actually play them because everything is being mm -hmm. uh, processed on the cloud. And they just send you a, an image of, of the game. Of course, you need a super nice internet, yeah. like super speed internet. Like, yeah. Um, but you can run super high quality games on, on a Mac, for example, or mm -hmm. like a medium spec Windows computer. So it's it's super powerful and it's it's pretty cheap right now. It's nice. But yeah, that's I think it's a, I think more accessible. That's what I really like about that part. They give them user more accessible to using these tools for that part. I think it's an amazing feature of it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to spend like ten thousand dollars on a computer. Just get a computer that mm, costs yeah. like oh yeah, I don't yes, know, yeah. four hundred dollars. Like, Exactly. Yeah. I remember in, in the beginning of VR, like developing, I the headset was cost like seven hundred dollars, and the PC <laughs> yeah. or laptop ready was like yeah. two thousand dollars. So basically, you have to drop at three K minimum just yeah. to start doing things, developing anything. But right now, it's it's very affordable. You just have to spend three hundred dollars on the headset. Just give the cable, to a box on Amazon uh, cable, one of the cool one, and that's it. And you just have to like a and right now, laptop PC already like ready to take on building anything uh, for VR at the moment. So, I think it's cool. And all the engine what you're using like Unreal or Unity, it's free for, to use and to put to build mm -hmm. the project personally. Mm -hmm. So, and also already some templates because in the beginning VR developing there's nothing ready. You have to like, figure out how to build anything from scratch. Yeah. Grabbing, snapping, rotation. There was like zero, like any accessible documentation information, like what the best experience with VR. Because as you remember, right. in the beginning VR like experience, it was a lot like a roller coaster experience. It's the worst experience for the first time users because it make people sick, throw up, make dizzy. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember it was very popular on a store like uh, any VR store with the moment, like a Steam store or an Oculus store, but everything. That mm -hmm. part. But now slowly we have more knowledge and you have more like a user friendly VR application. So people don't get dizzy yeah. about that integration. Yeah. And I like that people don't need to be a software engineer or even know how to code to create mm -hmm. like a world, for example, in Horizon. And you can do some even some scripting within Horizon if you want to have some things moving or doing some translation or even escalation or even play some music in the background. And you can do some basic scripting. I've been I've been meeting some creators in Horizon, as I told you, and they mm -hmm. are exploring all these new features that Horizon give them to to create their their rooms. I remember when I started doing VR development, and I bought a a Google Cardboard. Do you remember Google Cardboard? Oh, Google Cardboard. Yeah, <laughs> I still have it. I still have it in, in my shop. Yeah. Yeah. So it, Google Cardboard. Uh, for those who don't know. It's just a little piece of cardboard that you fold and you put your phone in a in a hole. <laughs> I remember I, I was in Venezuela when this happened and mm -hmm. I had to wait for like two months for for get a cardboard and it was just a piece of cardboard. And I, when I got it, I was super excited. I showed it to my mom, hey, I got this. Uh, I'm gonna be creating virtual reality apps. And I remember I, I used them a couple of times and it got like sweaty, you know, greasy, the, the cardboard, it was terrible, <laughs> but it was, it was nice because it was a different way to do apps, right, or, or to render right, right. and show uh, apps. Exactly, that time was, but right now it's just like, uh, it's not the best the experience, it's just very limited, but at that time, oh, yeah, it was, I think it's very accessible, like super simple. It was your like phone, VR. yeah. You, exactly, just use your phone to see, but right now we have Grab a quest. And you put it like this it's in your right. face. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, sure, yeah. All right, well thank you very much for you. for coming to I the show. It would really, really be nice to have like uh, maybe the 
microphone, like three D something, you know, like in studio they have it. It'd be nice to have. All right, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I love it. It's gonna be cool stuff to have it. To also integrate it like to movie microphone something's kind of cool. So I kind of love. I kind of like it to have like like cute devices here. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank yeah. you, Sasha. Thank you for um, me. I'll yeah, see you around. Uh, I'll see you maybe in an event, maybe in the metaverse, maybe somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, nice yeah, chat. Yeah. Nice chat. Great. Yeah. Nice chatting. All yeah. Right. yeah. Hopefully, we can have it more in the future. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, right, for listening bye. to the, today's podcast, and see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>